what you are about to listen to is me, Pastor Michael Bowman, as I think out loud about and try to apply the scripture to anything and everything that comes to mind. This usually happens in my car. So jump in and let's talk. So it's been a while since I've talked about social media. A while back when I was first getting started doing this, I was talking about that a bit more because it was on my mind and really the, my meditations upon or thinking about how to interact within the social media world and how to translate that into offline connections, that was really what drove me initially to start recording these thoughts and putting them out there so that y'all could hear them so that it would hopefully birth uh, both your own thinking more biblically about the world in various different ways on all kinds of different topics, but also so that I could actually, you know, hopefully connect with some of you over time as you reach out or as we're able to do that. So that's why early on I had uh, quite a few reflections upon the internet, upon social media. One of the things that I think I said anyway, I don't, believe it or not, I don't go back and re-listen to myself all the time. So I really don't remember if this is exactly what I said, but I think I put something about uh, up about the idea that to write something down and to put it out online is in a sense to concretize it a little bit and it makes it more difficult to say you were wrong. It connects you a little more personally to it than if you were just having a conversation over a beer or something like that. And I had a conversation recently um, with somebody that was going through a kind of online spat and uh, was really new to social media and uh, did not maybe even understand the best way to interact with people online and didn't think about how they were coming across online in this new medium. And I say new, it, you know, obviously it's not new, new, but uh, new for a lot of people who are just starting to use it more regularly. And in the conversation, one of the things that I started to think about was how things like Facebook and uh, in a similar ways, Twitter or, you know, just name the social media site. For a lot of people, it seems like, it seems like this is both the new public square, so it's where you kind of put out ideas and there's a bunch of other people that are gonna see them that might not otherwise be interacting with you. So it's a new public square in that everybody is kind of contributing their ideas about the world, about politics, about the Bible, about the church. But at the same time, it's like a journal or a diary. And it's so like personal and you put out these personal reflections and thoughts about your life that if somebody was to come and say, oh, actually, I think that you're wrong about this or that. Oh, I think that this is problematic. I think that adds even more so than just kind of concretizing your ideas. If you're coming to it with that view. And I think there are a lot of people that do this. Maybe I'm wrong and you can tell me if I am, but I think there are a lot of people that use social media as a kind of public diary. And so if they're ever questioned about what's in their diary, as I'm using the phrase, that's going to be extremely difficult for that, like that's going to uh, come across no matter what as a very personal attack. And it does seem like people act that way. They receive things that way online. Part of the difficulty is that probably some people see it as like a personal diary. Some people see it as a, as a form of the public square where you debate ideas and question things. With that being the case, you're just gonna be fraught with conflict. People are going to interpret things however they want. 
it's already difficult to communicate online. Then you add those things in. Part of the problem is that we don't have, we've not had social media and the internet for long enough where we've established a full decorum. And there's, I feel like some have. So anybody who is, you know, in their 20s or 30s right now probably has grown up mostly with the internet, with social media to some extent in their lives, at least in their young adult lives. And so they're, they're used to it in a sense. And many of us had to make a whole bunch of mistakes to realize what we should and what we shouldn't do, what kind of jokes are okay, what kind of jokes aren't, what, what kind of things you can and can't say, how you can and can't argue with people. I think that a lot of people feel the cringe a little bit when uh, older generations are now getting on to things like Facebook. Uh, Facebook is now like dominated by uh, those who are in older generations than, say, millennials. And when that happens, there's going to be a total different understanding of what this is for and how to use it. Because there's no culturally accepted code of conduct for interacting online. Most codes of conduct across our culture are falling apart anyway. And now we have this new medium where we're trying to interact with each other, but we have not had it long enough to establish some kind of decorum in how you're supposed to interact. At least not enough that it's it's consistent across generations, uh, across states, across the whole of the country, across the political spectrum. There are different ways that people interact together. And I know I'm just kind of putting this idea out there, but I think that this can be a, a good warning for each of us. Uh, an important thing to think about for each of us is we interact online with one another, that we take that into account. You can still interact with people and when they come across as really harsh to you online, you can assume the best instead of just assuming the worst. I've had interactions online where I see something being shared around, some statement by uh, you know, a, a Christian in some position of authority and everybody's talking about just how horrible it is. And I read it, and I, it does look horrible. And in the context of everybody saying, I can't believe this person said you know, this, this horrible thing, uh, I will take it in that context and say, oh yeah, this looks really bad. But I've had interactions where then I, where then I reach out to the person who's originally spoken these things, and they've said, oh yeah, well, that was just a joke, like an actual joke. But nobody took it that way. And then the minute it gets taken out of context and it, it just goes everywhere, there's just no way of getting back to some kind of place of understanding. This is part of the danger of the online world. Now, I don't think that that's reason to ignore it or to not use social media. And I don't think that that's a reason to start condemning people for it. And I don't think it's something that we can't figure out. I don't think it's that hard to figure out what is and isn't acceptable. And that doesn't mean just because somebody gets hurt feelings that something you said was wrong. Uh, that's, that's not the right way of looking at things. I actually think that one of the reasons that people use things like Facebook as a personal diary where they put these personal thoughts out there and then if somebody uh, comes at them and says, well, what they said really isn't right, they can kind of come back and say, well, you're attacking some personal thoughts of mine and that's not acceptable. I think people hide behind that. I think this is, this is so typical of our culture where you use your kind of uh, personal feelings about things as a cover for actually having to defend your beliefs, actually having to engage with other people. Everything becomes, well, if it's personal to me, then you can't actually touch it. And so it's a defense mechanism for highly insecure people usually. Highly insecure. And usually, I mean, insecurity means pride. I can talk about that sometime. But anytime there's insecurity, it's really a, a, a sign of of pride. But I think that we can figure out pretty easily how to interact and it's not that different from how you interact in the real world. But you just have to go into it understanding that everybody's going to have a different way of understanding what this is. 
and why I'm using it. Everybody's going to have a different understanding of what kind of tone is acceptable, what isn't. There are going to be different people that are using some kind of sarcasm or, or not sarcasm, and that makes it difficult, admittedly. But you can do it. You can do it, especially if you if you go into it with a biblical mindset, thinking I'm going to, to seek patience, humility, gentleness, kindness. I'm going to seek a, a firm conviction of the truth. And when I have wronged someone or when they have wronged me, I'm going to have the kind of love that covers a multitude of sins. I'm going to be quick to forgive. I'm going to be slow to anger. I want to be abounding like the Lord in love. And in doing so, I think that it would cut out the vast majority of conflict that occurs online, especially between Christians. Hey guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has been, go ahead and rate it, review it, or share it with a friend, especially if you're in La Crosse, Wisconsin, or the surrounding areas. That helps me expand the audience and hopefully increase the impact of these ideas. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns on anything that I just talked about, you can reach me at Pastor Michael J. Bowman at gmail.com. You can find more content from me, as well as information about the church that I pastor at ccc-pca.org. With that, I hope you can enjoy the many blessings of God today. Until next time.